Hey everyone, Irene here. I wanted to just do a quick follow-up from the vagus nerve post. So some of the questions that people ask are, so then I shouldn't stimulate my vagus nerve with this electrical thing, or should I not do toning work, or um, all the things where people are telling you to like stick your fingers in your ears, or whatever, or um, splashing cold water on the face, um, so these are all, we would say, techniques, tactics, strategies. If I think back into my curriculums, what I teach my students, if I use Smart Body, Smart Mind as an example. So if you're new here, you don't know what this is, SBSM, Smart Body, Smart Mind, is my 12-week curriculum. So this curriculum teaches people how to gain full regulation within their autonomic nervous system when they did not get it. Usually this is because of child rearing practices. The fact that I even say practices is a, is a dead giveaway. There shouldn't be child rearing practices. There should just be connection with infant to teach infant how to be an adult. But that's a story for another day. So we as adults are learning how to regulate our nervous systems as adults when we've maybe never had it. Or our parents maybe never had it or their parents never had it and so on and so on. So we're teaching, I'm teaching that within this curriculum, but within this 12 week curriculum with 30 plus lessons that are active, that are practical, plus all of the education. There's so much education I won't get into right now. There is maybe only two, it's just two, two specific neurosensory exercises that would be considered directly connected to working with the vagus nerve and it is something that has been popularized by Peter Levine, one of my mentors, and it's the VU sound or the VU ah sound, and it's a low baritone sound that rumbles in the belly, and it comes out in this sort of foghorn VU sound. Now, Having done this exercise with so many people over many, many, many years and seen it have, having seen it being done in practices, in trainings with Peter where he does this, and he often will do this right off the bat. And it's not necessarily because it's a good exercise for healing trauma. It shows very quickly where someone is in their regulation. Because if you show this to someone, you do it, and you watch, someone will, and there's all sorts of ways that a person takes this in, they might hear this sound and be like, wow, that's so cool, or they'll feel it, or they'll get goosebumps. It'll be a positive resource that, that resonates into their body because they're ready for it. Some people will hear this, and they'll, they'll startle. They'll get a little, like, Oh, I don't like that. What is that? Other people, you'll get them to do it and they're all for it. And what will come out will be like, ooh, ooh, like they can't do it. And it doesn't mean that they're bad or wrong. It just means they do not have the capacity in their viscera, in their diaphragms, in their system to have that expression that is bigger and that is often because the system is dysregulated. So back to this picture of the vagus nerve and the question, um, what about all these techniques, etc.? So I'm gonna add one more layer to this. If you have a newborn baby, they are not fully regulated. Even a baby that is full term, healthy, mom did everything right, all the natural childbirth, everything, 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 even with that, 
even with that, that baby does not have self-regulation. They can't socially engage. They can't self-regulate. They don't know how to soothe themselves. They need to um, learn over time how to self-regulate. And if they are crying or if they are hungry or if they are scared, giving them a technique, saying to them, I want you to do this, or I want you to take this deep breath and hold it and then exhale. I want you to tap, I want you to contain. I mean, we might hold them, we might contain them ourselves, we might sing a soft lullaby, but we're not asking that baby to do it themselves. We have to attune to them, connect with them, but it's the connection and the safety that then allows them to feel something is there, someone is there, I'm okay, and then they self-regulate, and then that's what wires the portion of the vagus nerve that is not wired up when we're born. Parts of it are, parts of it aren't. I've done other videos on the polyvagal theory. Just look them up and watch those videos. So it isn't enough. If we get stressed out and we need a technique to bring ourselves down, we're not regulated. That is not regulation. I did another video on this. It's actually pinned up. I'm wearing a pink coat, watch that. So it all comes back to this origin story of the human, right? What did we need? What was the best case scenario to teach us self-regulation? And the answer is, a connected, attuned, safe caregiver. It doesn't have to be a parent, it could be a nanny, it could be a sibling, it doesn't have to be the mother. And so this is what teaches that co that self-regulation is the co-regulation with another human. Now the trouble that we've got is currently there are so many adults who are not regulated and they are having babies. This is just the way it's been. It's no one's fault, it's just the way it is. And so Right now, we're in this weird situation where there's like this half understanding of what needs to occur. And it's going to take some time for the new generations to learn this stuff and wait before they have kids so that when they have their kids, they don't need to manipulate, they don't need to play games. They're just themselves in their full regulation with their offspring, teaching them through connection, play, attunement, and all these things. Um, it's so simple in say the animal kingdom. We've made it a bit more complex because of our higher brains, culture, society, domestication of plants and animals, domestication of ourselves. So um, it's a bit trickier. But what I have seen, because I have students who are having babies now, and I have students who have adult children, teenage children, and little children, and even the parents of adult children will say, when I start to regulate my own system, and when I start to learn how to be in my body in this connected, attuned, biological way where I am listening to myself, and I'm listening to the environment, and I'm regulated, not just calm, but I have flow in my system to, to mount an anger response if I have to, a calm response if I have to, an engaged response if I have to, or whatever it might be. So the ability for us to have that regulation makes it such that when we have either our own children or we have someone else's child, or we just connect with a child because we're around them, we know what to do with them. It is in us, it is written in us how to take care of our young. If it wasn't, we would not be here. But we're in this pickle right now, big bloody pickle, big one, where um, kids are really struggling and suffering and fertility rates are down and all sorts of things are occurring and it's not just this, it's a lot of other things in the environment, toxins, pharmaceuticals, etc. It's impacting our ability to have that natural connection with self, the environment, and our young. And we really need to turn this ship around because um, it's not meant to be difficult. It's not meant to be hard. This vagus nerve thing, is, it's important, but it's almost gotten hijacked a little bit 
ooh, it's science, ooh, it's biology. So let's, let's dissect the vagus nerve and just work with it. And this isn't good. I did an interview with one of our students in SBSM. Her name is Jerica. Look for her interview on my YouTube channel. She did a form of vagus nerve work with some body workers and it threw her system over the edge. And um, we don't want that. Someone asked, will I demonstrate the VU? No, I will not. You could probably find it on YouTube, but I actually don't recommend just doing it willy-nilly. And there's a reason why in Smart Body, Smart Mind, we don't do the VU exercise until we're into week, I believe it is seven or eight. And it's because if we're not ready for what that toning exercise brings us, it can throw us into shutdown or it can throw us into activation and we don't want that. There needs to be a ability to sense ourselves and feel ourselves and know when enough is enough. And so in this format, I, I just don't do these um, demos because it is ethically, um, it's just not ethical. Simple as that. So um, that's what I wanted to say. I want to talk about this vagus nerve, this connection with regulation, this connection with infants, and where we're at right now in our current um, earth paradigm, which is a lot of, a lot of um, out of context information that um, if we don't understand how our system works and what these things are, we can actually do more harm than good. Um, and that's it for today. So thank you for listening. If you are super new here, thank you for listening to me ramble on. Um, there is so much information that you can get from my site. Um, there is tons of audio lessons on my site audio samplers that are very basic, very simple, but do not underestimate them. Do not underestimate them. Someone asked the question, do you recommend the Stephen Porges audio for my 12 year old daughter? She has medical trauma. I can't answer that question. Um, uh, it depends what the, the audio is, what is the capacity of your daughter. Um, if she has medical trauma, I would say find a really good practitioner who works with the somatic system with medical trauma. Um, and some of the best things for kids is to just be with them, play with them, connect with them. Um, I would be more inclined to do the stress organ work that I teach in Smart Body, Smart Mind before offering big sound lessons. Um, even my husband, who's a, a composer, a trained composer, a percussionist, and a sound healer, he doesn't even recommend direct sound healing anymore as a way to heal trauma because even beautiful sound music can throw our system um, into too much uh, activation. So um, maybe that's one way of saying, I'm not sure if I can recommend it, but you have to, you sh know your daughter best. And um, sometimes the easiest ways to work with kids and various traumas is to just be like, what do they need? So they feel contained, safe. Um, and you know, 12 is at a, at a different age. It's not a child. You know, 12 isn't ch child, but it's also not, you know, full adult teenager. Um, you got to just listen, attune, um, and perhaps get some consultation with a professional who understands medical trauma and, of course, the, the repercussions of um, what kind of medical trauma, you know, was it anesthesia? You know, something like as simple as dental work can be hugely traumatizing. Being held down, being given something that you don't want, and it's being forced on you, that is a medical trauma. So it really depends on the kind of medical trauma, where the person is at, where the child is at with their own regulation, what kind of other early trauma they might have. But for you, the mom, you have to get your own regulation on board. The more regulated you are, the more you can be a helper and a healer for your kiddo. And, and that's one of the secrets they don't want to know, right? I think um, at our core, as parents, as mothers, um, whether it's your own biological child or you are being the mother to someone who needs you, when you have that connection and care and listening and you're in your own body, um, that could be healing in itself. Sometimes we don't need 
the big um, therapists and that to help. Take care, everybody. Wanted to make this short. Bye for now.